For those of you who haven't seen what all has been going on with Richard Brooks, for those of you that don't know exactly what happened, so a police officer actually got into a scuffle with him, and we'll go into some of the details here in a second with video, got into a scuffle with him, and that ended in the police officer taking this man's life. That's just what happened. I mean, th those are the facts. Well, this all happened in a Wendy's parking lot, and protesters the next day burned down the Wendy's, which is really odd. And also, here's the interesting piece of, of detail, and I haven't been able to independently confirm this, but this is a report that I have seen. We'll see if there is any truth to it. Uh, that one of the, the person that actually struck the match and, and basically set the building on fire was a white person. And that would lead us to believe that this is probably Antifa doing infiltration again. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, j just a possibility, something to be on the lookout in upcoming days. I'm not trying to say for sure that we know that is the case, but we have seen videos, and I've actually covered videos of, of Antifa infiltrating Black Lives Matter protest and, and trying to, not that Black Lives Matter is innocent in this, but Black Lives Matter trying to uh, incite riots and, and try to make things worse than they are, trying to, to whip up the crowd. And so just something to be aware of, just something to be on the lookout for. But the thing that is so crazy in this case, and this is why I am hesitant to jump on a bandwagon until I've seen the evidence for myself, never, ever trust a person or a news source or an organization or anything like that that, that dispenses information that you know that they already have a position before the story starts. This is something that you should never trust. And when it comes to these police, uh, the police brutality cases and, and things like this, first of all, the narrative has been completely wrong. And we'll show you why in a second with video evidence. The media came out and was saying that this was an unarmed black man, which is not true. He was unarmed, and then he stole a police officer's weapon. And basically, he was just peacefully sitting in the drive through at Wendy's, minding his own business, not doing anything, and police targeted him, sought him out, and then, uh, for no reason, even though he was being peaceful, killed him. I've actually seen media reports from the left that are claiming this. But when you dig into the story and read what actually happened and watch the video footage, which there is an abundance of, for yourself, it turns out the exact opposite is true. Now, there are people that uh, go into these things with their minds already made up, and we all know this. There are people that we know, I'm sure that everybody knows at least one person like this, going into a case like this that always assumes that either the cop is always right or the black person is always right. Unfortunately, that is something we see on a pretty consistent basis, that there is at least a section of the population that always assumes that one side is right before having seen any evidence. What I am somewhat encouraged to see, especially from the conservative side, is that when it came to, like, the George Floyd case, for example, every single conservative that I'm aware of, every one of renown, automatically said, well, that's not right. That's completely unjust. Those police officers are murdering that man. And then when it comes to this case, the exact opposite. Which would lead you to believe what? That they are following the evidence where it leads. That's the standard that we need to maintain no matter what. That we observe the evidence and then make a call, not the other way around. Not because of our political leanings or because of the color of our skin or any other factor other than... What does the truth say? Where does the evidence lead? And I will follow it wherever it goes, whether it makes me uncomfortable or not, whether or not it fits my narrative. That's the standard that we have to maintain. And any objective, fair-minded person looking at all of the evidence that led up to this would have to say that the police officer is at the very least, you know, acting in good faith at this point. And here's why. We'll go ahead and show you some of the footage of this. This is the first one, and, and it's important to show this because a lot of news programs that are talking about this going into the story, they're not showing you the lead-up to all of these events, which does change the context. 
And so one thing that you'll notice in this story, and I'll continue to, to help narrate and point some things out as we're looking at it, is that this guy, regardless of how you feel about him or the police officers or whether or not systematic racism is a thing or whatever, this dude's clearly on something. There he is, he was stopped in a drive through with the windows. All right, police officer banging hey. on his window. Does open it. Sir! What's up, man? Police police officer hey, you're parked in the drive through right now. And sees you. Everything's on camera. Sees you. See in the line. here in the line. In the well, line. I, was, I wasn't in the line. Did I pull you over in the line? You just saw a video. I woke up. You had to wake up, man. Line. You didn't in pull the, him right here? No, it was here. I had to wake up. Well, look. They went back to sleep and I had to wake up again. So you, you think that you're in Forest Park right now? I'm on Old Dixie Highway, Clayton County. Right. No, you're not. Well, Forest Park, Georgia. No. Jonesboro, Georgia. No. Try again. I have to. I mean, like I said, I'm on Old Dixie Highway. Nope. I'm not on Old Dixie Highway? No. Quite a ways away from it. Huh? This is, a bridge is here. Nope, no bridge. No, I'm saying Old Dixie Highway. You're not near Old Dixie Highway. I'm not You're, you're not even in Clayton County. Where am I? You're in Atlanta. Will you take a preliminary breath test for me? It's yes or no. I don't want to refuse anything. I, it's yes or no, it's completely up to you. Yes, I will. Okay, just wait here while I grab. All right, so that's the all of the lead up. And by the way, that video was 40 minutes long. You just saw about 90 seconds of it. And so you can go and watch the whole thing online. There's a lot of build up to this whole event and everything that unfolded, but you can tell from that video, this dude is clearly on something. And so the idea that the police officers just saw a black man targeted him, which by the way, if this were happening in Atlanta, you would think that the police officers would have done so beforehand. It's a um, if I'm not mistaken, Atlanta is at least a uh, close to, if not a majority black city. Um, but when it when it comes to this, the the narrative that has been pushed is that this guy was just sitting there minding his own business. The police officers dragged him out of his car for no reason other than the fact that he was black. That dude was passed out in a Wendy's drive through line. So he clearly drove there under the influence of something which is already a crime. And he's passed out, so passed out that the cop bangs on his door, opens his door, is yelling, hey, you okay? Hey, you all right? And he still doesn't wake up. And this is the part that I had to skip over for the sake of time. He wakes the guy up. He tells him to pull over into a parking spot there. The guy uh, closes the door, falls asleep again. There in the drive through line, the cop has to wake him up again. He drives over to the parking spot. Finally, they start having a conversation. This guy has no idea where he is. He doesn't even know what county he's in. He's seeing bridges off in the distance that don't exist. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was just alcohol. Maybe it's alcohol mixed with something else. But either way, the idea that these cops didn't have a good reason to question and detain this person is asinine. I mean, this is clearly a person that is a danger to the public because he's been operating a vehicle, and that's another thing. He, he tried, he's lied to the cops multiple times in this video. Uh, at one point, he tells them that the only thing he had was a margarita. Later in the video, he says, well, uh, I had a daiquiri, and doesn't mention the margarita. Uh, at one point, he says he only had one drink. At one point, he says he only had two. At one point, he says he had one and a half drinks. Uh, at one point, he says he can't remember what he drank. At one point, he said he's had nothing to drink at all since yesterday. I mean, th the guy constantly lies to these guys throughout the entire process. He's clearly trying to get out of a DUI. He makes up some crazy story about someone dropping him off and his car already being there, forgetting that they found him in the drive through line, not in a parking lot. He doesn't even remember the cop waking him up 10 minutes ago and moving him into the parking spot as, a tr as opposed to the drive through lane. So that context makes a really big difference, and that's the kind of stuff that the media is not telling you. And it's not like this is some hidden secret. The media, it's not as though 
uh, you know, they just didn't have this footage yet. It's all over the internet. If they bothered to do five minutes worth of research, they would see every bit of this narrative is completely wrong. But that's the build up, and, and finally he does agree to have a breathalyzer test. He, he tries to take a sobriety test, which he fails miserably. Uh, I don't know because they don't actually say he doesn't verbalize it in the video what the breathalyzer test showed, but directly after taking the breathalyzer test, that's when things start to escalate. Because up till then, they've been very nice, they've been very cordial, they've been very cooperative and patient. Like I said, the video goes on for about 40 minutes, which means that they were trying to let this guy explain. They, they've been very patient with him. They didn't rush right to uh, any kind of violence, which again is, is kind of indicative of where their head is. Because the media narrative that these are white cops that just sought out uh, give, you know, giving a black guy some trouble for no reason, if they were going out to kill a black person and that was the goal, First of all, why the heck would you do it in a Wendy's parking lot? And second of all, this is the worst possible way to do it because you wouldn't have all this buildup and talking to the guy, trying to make sure that he's safe. And you'll see that right here where we show the part directly before everything escalates and everything goes south. While he was peaceful, while he was cooperating, the police officers were very calm, very professional, very patient, even though they know he's lying to them, even though they know he's trying to get away with something. They're still very patient and professional with him. The only point at which it gets violent, at which they try to subdue the guy, is when he escalates the situation towards them, not the other way around. And you can see that in this clip here. Make sure, man, you're safe to drive, that's all. I know, man. I just... You, you, you scared me a little bit because you were sleeping in there, so that's, you know, why I was making sure you're okay. You know, and then that's... Police officer's concern. I know, I know. You just doing your job. Right. Just... Take me home. I'm ready to go. So you had about one and a half drinks, but you don't remember what kind of drinks they were? No, sir. All right. I really don't, Mr. Right. I think you've had too much to drink to be driving. Put your hands on your back for me. Here, put your hands on your back. Hands off the taser! Hands off the taser! Hands off the taser! He's going for the officer's taser. This is the same event from a different angle. This is the dash footage. You can see there, the cops have him down on the ground. And it looks like they've got him for a second. He's still struggling. Cop pulls his taser, tries to tase him, fails to. Still struggling. Right, so he flips the cop over on him. And see, this is where he takes the police officer's taser. He's got the taser. He runs off. And so not only does this guy wrestle two police officers, punches one in the head, slams one down on the concrete, and then when one of the officers tries to pull a taser, a non-lethal weapon, because he's trying to subdue him without hurting him, he takes the officer's taser and runs off with it. And so the idea that this was just a peaceful guy that the police officers gunned down for no reason other than they wanted to shoot a black man is just absolutely ridiculous. He stole the officer's weapon. He fought the police officers before that, and they were very polite with him. The only time where violence ensued, the only time where the police said, okay, we've got to get physical with him, is when he started trying to hurt them. And that's something that not only a police officer has the right to do as an officer of the law who is charged with enforcing our laws and keeping this guy from driving under the influence of alcohol and whatever else he's got in his system, but also they are charged with that just as being human beings that have the ability and the inborn human right to preserve their own life. This guy has already attacked them. He has already tried to seize their weapon. He, and it's only when he's the one that escalates it did they start trying to go after him? Did they start trying to bring him down and, and arrest him? That's the only time where things go south. And by the way, because you can't see from the body cam, uh, the body cam actually winds up falling off in the scuffle. And I mean, you could see why they're rolling around there uh, on the ground with this guy trying to get him handcuffed. And uh, so the body cam falls off. It doesn't really show us the events of the shot. But we do have the clip of that as well. This is surveillance footage from the Wendy's, and so we'll go ahead and show that, show that right now. It's security camera footage, so there's no sound, but I'll narrate. 
All right, so there it is. You see he's running across the screen. Now watch. See right there? All right, well, now we'll show it again. Now watch Richard Brooks as he's running. So he's running from the cops. The cop is pursuing him. He's got his taser out, hand on his pistol. And we'll watch it one more time. Watch where the police officer's hand goes to his pistol. And when he draws it and when he fires, because that last scene there is right when the firing happens. You see it? Right there, hand on the pistol. His hand only goes for his weapon, his lethal weapon, his firearm. When Brooks points the taser back at him, the taser that he stole from the other police officer. So the police officer, even after he's stolen the man's taser, he pulls his own taser, tries to fire. I don't know if it hit him and just didn't phase him because he was on something or uh, it just missed or whatever. But you can see the guy turn around and we'll actually show it one more time because I wanted to point this out as well. Not only does Brooks pull the taser on the officer, but you'll see a flash right here. See it? So that's the taser going off. And it is only at the point where the guy turns around and turns a weapon on the police officer that he fires his gun. And so up until then, the police officer seems to have absolutely no intent of hurting this guy, even though this guy clearly has intent and already has tried to hurt him. And it's only when he turns around with the taser and people are saying, well, the taser is a non-lethal weapon. There's two reasons why that argument really doesn't hold water. First of all, a non-lethal weapon is determined only by the user. My fist is a lethal weapon if I use it the right way. In fact, more people are killed by hands and feet than firearms in this country every single year. That's an actual FBI crime statistic. And so, theoretically, this guy could use the taser, incapacitate the officer, and then kill him, hurt him, or go off and hurt somebody else. And furthermore, and this is the second part of that, the police officer also has a gun. And so if this guy were to fire the taser, incapacitate the officer, and then take his firearm, he could wind up killing the officer, killing somebody else. There's no telling where this could end. That is why when you resist arrest and you are pointing a weapon at an officer, the officer has every right to defend himself and the public at that point, just like literally any other citizen would. If this were just a regular citizen, now obviously a regular citizen couldn't make a citizen's arrest like this and in this capacity, but if there were a scuffle going on between somebody, let, let's say that a random guy saw that uh, someone had a taser on his belt, he goes for the man's weapon and then tries to turn it on him, that person would absolutely be justified in using lethal force to combat the assault upon his person. And I understand, let's hold police officers to a higher standard. That is something that I am in favor of. Remember, I'm mostly a libertarian, <laughs> which means generally I'm not a fan of heavy-handed heavy government. <laughs> and that holds true with police officers as well. But in this situation, whether that guy was a police officer or not, he has a right to defend his life. And so... I mean, really, there's no other way to put it. Everything that led up to that, all of the context surrounding it, shows that this police officer was 100% in the right. He was 100% justified in that. And the only thing that I don't understand how the mayor of the city here in Atlanta demanded that police this police officer be fired and there, there be an investigation launched into this. Personally, I don't have an issue with there being an investigation, but... That's got to be a pretty open and shut case based on this footage. I, I don't really understand or see how it could be anything else when you consider what just happened, what just unfolded right in front of your very eyes. Because if there were ever a case of what a police officer should do, like if that's the level of escalation, well then what would it take to justify a police officer defending his life and using lethal force. If that's not a textbook example of a justification of the use of lethal force, generally, like, what is? Does the guy have to shoot the cop first and land a blow before he's allowed to fire back? I, I mean, we talk about police training and police reform, and I'm okay with those conversations. I think that 
those conversations can lead somewhere good and, and, you know, probably would. We could stand to have a little police, uh, you know, better training. I'm always in favor of that if you can convince me that it's something that would be beneficial and helpful. And, and I think that that very often can be the case. But in this particular situation, in this scenario, can anybody that has been commenting on this, mayors, uh, politicians, can you explain to me what you should have done, what would have been different, what would have been better? And if not, what is the qualification for lethal use of force? They constantly, and we actually talked about this not too long ago with Joe Biden saying, well, we should just train cops to shoot people in the legs. Yeah, that's, that's not a thing that can, they're not Rambo. This isn't the movies. They can't hit a person's legs in motion like that. I mean, you'd have to be even the best trained military in the world. Our military couldn't be trained to do something like that. That's insane. Uh, they wouldn't be able to do it consistently, at least. But anyway, so everything leading up to this would show that the police officer was absolutely justified. Thing that happened to George Floyd, absolutely not. Thing that happened to Ahmed Ar Arbery, absolutely not. And the second part of this that I think that people aren't bringing in is, and, and I know that the police officers don't know this, they can't have knowledge of this, and so this doesn't really speak to how their reaction of it should have been. But I do find it odd that the left is constantly trying to make martyrs and saints out of some of the people involved in these circumstances. In George Floyd's case, police officers absolutely 100% wrong. Murder charge is wholly appropriate for the officer that was kneeling on the guy's neck for seven minutes. However, I don't understand the desire to make this guy into a saint, to make this guy into a, a martyr for the cause. They did the same thing with Mike Brown, trying to make him out to be, I remember the phrase being used over and over again in the media, the gentle giant, when there was no truth to that. The guy was a thug. And the reason that he had had an altercation with the police officers in the first place that led up to his death, which again, was justified. The thing that led up to that is that he knocked off a gas station. And in the case of George Floyd, what happened to him obviously was not justified. But the reason that the police officers stopped him in the first place were because he was in possession of drugs at the time and this guy had a rap sheet. He had been in and out of, of jail and, and all kinds of legal trouble. And then in the case of Rashard Brooks, this guy has a rap sheet as long as your arm. In fact, one of the charges brought up on there that he was, if I'm not mistaken, found guilty of looking through the legal records is cruelty to children. And they're trying to make this guy out into some kind of saint that ought to be uh, uh, ought to be thought of fondly, and his life was tragically ended too short, despite him being perfect and not harming anybody. This guy was a scumbag. Now, if the officers had acted inappropriately, that wouldn't have justified that, even if he was a scumbag. Just like George Floyd being a terrible person doesn't change the fact that he was murdered, and the police should be held accountable for that. But I really don't understand why they make these guys the martyrs and not people like Breonna Taylor or Botham Jean. I mean, that would make far more sense. They actually were good people that didn't do anything wrong, didn't do anything to provoke police officers and lost their lives tragically because of a, you know, a horrible mistake by police officers that obviously were not doing their job the way that they should. And so I don't understand why they don't make those guys the rallying cry as opposed to this guy and George Floyd. It just doesn't make any sense. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.